Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Proactive Decision Making with Open Edge Pro 2. Today, we are joined by our speaker, Mike Fergal. Mike Fergal started his career at Progress in 1989 in development. He has held many different roles during that time, including working on the Open Edge database product and managing different development teams working on the Open Edge database. In 2012, he joined the consulting team at Progress as Director of Database Services, where he and his team are responsible for managing over 2,000 distinct databases and over 140 terabytes of data and 175,000 connected users. As a former developer of the Open Edge database, Mike brings a unique perspective as both a consumer of the Open Edge technology and also a developer of the same technology. I'll now turn it over to Mike to start the presentation. Mike? Thank you very much, Michelle. So today we're talking about Pro2 and what the Pro2 product is and how you can use it to better serve your customers or your users. So here's our agenda. We're going to go over Pro2, what problems it solves, the benefits, how it's configured, the infrastructure, and then we're going to talk about um, some use cases and then have our logo slide to show all the customers that are using Pro2 today. At the end, we'll have a question and answer period. So what is Open Edge Pro 2? It is real-time data replication for Open Edge. Open Edge is a uh, database, as you know, but there are many other databases that are commodity databases in, in the space. So Pro 2 allows you to replicate data out of Open Edge into Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, or sometimes even another Open Edge database. Why would you do this? Well, a lot of people are doing this today already. Most people have integrated systems where OpenEdge just isn't the only part of their business ecosystem. They also have other databases like SQL Server, Oracle, or other applications. So a lot of customers want to get a larger view of data from these distinct systems. So a common way to do this is to export data out of OpenEdge and import it into a BI platform, most common being SQL Server. So you export data out of OpenEdge, you import it to SQL Server, and then you run reporting against that SQL Server database that would have not only just the OpenEdge data, but also data from other systems. The downside of this is that these exports happen periodically. So they're not happening real time. They happen at midnight overnight, or maybe they happen two times a day. Sometimes they happen as frequently as every hour, but still decisions are being made on data that's old. So what's the solution? The solution is to get the data to this BI platform quicker. One way to do this would be to build it into the application, but that's difficult. So most application vendors have not done this. Some of the challenges they have are data types are different. In OpenEdge, you have data types like character, and what does that map to in SQL Server? In OpenEdge, you have data types like an array. What does that map to in SQL Server? And then maintaining connectivity is hard. So if one of the databases go down that's unrelated to the application, does the application still function? So these are the hurdles that customers have or application partners have for not connecting and doing replication to an, another target for reporting. And then finally, compliance. GDPR in Europe states that if somebody wants their data removed, it needs to be removed in all places. So if you are exporting data out to the file system to import data into SQL Server, you need to now have one more piece of control over where that data lives. It lives in OpenEdge, it lives in SQL Server, it now lives in exported files. And so you have to clean those up. And that may not be compliant with what the GDPR rules are for your company. So enter Pro2. Pro2 enables this proactive decision-making because the data that you're making decisions on is real-time replicated. It allows third-party applications to be able to connect to this data to make those decisions. It's a small database footprint because we're not duplicating data inside of OpenEdge. We're just keeping track of changes, and then we push those changes over to the target system. And because we're not exporting to a, an ASCII file, you don't have a redundant copy of data that you now need to manage. The data is only in OpenEdge and the target that you prefer. So this is what it looks like. You have your OpenEdge application on the left-hand side where your end users are running the application where they're doing data entry and doing light reporting. You have Pro2 in the middle, and Pro2 is capturing changes 
and replicating data to Oracle SQL Server or OpenEdge, and this is where all reporting happens. So you can see there's multiple benefits here. If you can get the reporting users not reporting directly off OpenEdge, that's less work on the OpenEdge database. So your users that are running the application will have better performance because there'll be less users on that database and there'll be less rows being read out of the database. So the users that are critical to your business, the ones doing data entry, the ones that keep the business running are the ones that will be serviced the best. But then you have your financial users, the one running reports, the one running legacy reports that they have to see what happened maybe last year or the year before. That's not data that the application users care about at all. That is now moved off to a different platform, could even be another open edge database. But typically it's going to be a SQL Server platform or, or Oracle platform, and that's where the reporting runs. This is a very mature product supports all progress versions back from 8.3 all the way up to version 12. We are now on version six of the product. We have a large customer base. 250 customers have adopted this Pro2 platform with about 650 implementations. And this is what the network topology looks like. So we add nine tables to the source application. Those can reside inside an existing database if you own the application or it can be separated out to a separate database. If it's in a separate database, all the clients that connect to the database have to be aware of this REPL database. And then that REPL database has configuration tables and then finally it has our queuing table. So then we have the Pro2 software that lives on another machine that connects to both the source database, the REPL database, finds out what changed, goes and fetches the record from the source database and pushes that record through the data server license to the target database, assuming that you're replicating to SQL Server or Oracle. And then on that Pro2 server, we have a small schema holder database to represent what the schema looks like for that target database. So this is our typical configuration when everything's on premise. So you have your source application on premise, you have SQL Server on premise, and you want to tie the two together. However, that doesn't suit everybody. There's people that have large infrastructures where they may have multiple data centers. They may have data centers in Europe, Asia Pac, in the US, and they want to um, consolidate. So in the US, that could be the place where they want to have the SQL Server database, but they have um, databases in Europe and we've got to collect that data and bring it into the US. If we were to do the client server mechanism there, it wouldn't work. So we have a WAN configuration. Again, the source application has its databases. We add these nine tables, either in an existing database or a separate database, and we introduce an application server. So the client, instead of talking directly to the source database and the REPL database, it talks through an app server. App server sends a batch of rows to the client, and then the client, again, populates that and pushes that to the target database. So this is very common for people that have moved to the cloud. Examples are QAD Cloud, Skywards Cloud, Demos Eyes Cloud. They are in the cloud infrastructure, but they want to do local reporting. So their source application is running in the cloud, and we use this, this configuration to keep a local SQL Server database up to date so the financial people can run the reports locally while the people running the business work on the cloud database. So there are really two components to the Pro2 product. There's a change data capture piece. It's replication triggered based for any version that's below 11.7. And then it's CDC for any version above 11.7. So if, if you are already running 11.7 or 12, we would leverage the change data capture feature of OpenEdge. But like I said, this supports all the way back to 8.3 of progress. So we use replication triggers for the non-CDC enabled products. So this change data capture portion keeps track of all the updates and it adds to a table called the replication queue. This is a lightweight table. We are not copying the record to that table. Instead, we're copying a pointer to the record to that table. So that table holds information like the date and time that the change was made, what the change operation was. Was it a creating a row? Was it updating a row? Was it deleting a row? And then it has just a pointer back to the source row. So this replication queue could have one row in it or many rows in it, depending on if there's a backlog with replication. And then we have our second part of the process, which is the replication process. 
These are threads, as we call them. They're just ABL clients, but we, we call, them, call them threads. And these threads manage the replication queue. So what they do is they look at the rows in the replication queue, find out the activity, go and fetch the source row, and then replicate that source row. We push the, the row to SQL Server. The replication queue tends to have uh, less than 10 records in it at most times. So when it goes to fetch the source record, that source record will still be in the database buffer cache. It's very rare that it would have to go read that record from disk because of the record being flushed out. The update to the row happens in memory, and then immediately after that, the replication process goes and fetches that row while it's still still in memory. And this process provides real-time replication. So the target schema, here's the big benefit of the target schema. So the applications that we have that are open edge have indexing structured for validation and lookup. That's the way all open edge applications tend to be developed then they don't have index structures for, for reporting. So on this target schema that the secondary database that you have, you can add indexes on any of the columns that you want. You can index columns that don't make sense for the validation and lookup portion for an application. This means that when you run reports, the reports will run fast because the indexing will be different. It'll, it's able to pick indexes on fields that are not indexed in the application database. The only restriction is those indexes must be non-unique indexes. But when you're doing reporting, you don't need unique indexes. Unique indexes are only used for validation. You can transform the schema. So this means you can map different tables to be different tables in SQL. You can map fields to be different fields in SQL. By default, we convert hyphens to underscores. This allows you when you start writing reports to be able to run queries without having to put uh, quotes or square brackets around them. Also, there's extent fields in the source application, in this example it's QAD, that get converted to field number one, field number two, field number three, field number four. So this does transformation on the fly to make sure that the schemas are identical. We also can create the target database schema. You don't have to go through that effort to create the target database schema. Pro2 does all the mapping of what an int is, what an int64 is, and how that maps to a SQL Server big int, for example. And then finally, you can transform data. It's just ABL code, so you can transform anything you want. We generate a set of replication libraries. Once they're generated, you can go in and edit those libraries and change how data gets moved from the source to target. It's just ABL code. We have customers that actually, in this ABL code, go look up values based on the value of the row that's being replicated, and then they bring data in and modify some of the fields. That's the type of customization customizations you can do. Or you could do simple customizations. You could take two fields, first name and last name, and combine them into last name, comma, first name in a single field. That would be a simple customization. We include these additional fields automatically. We have the row ID of the source row. So that's the join that we have between the target row and the source row. And we have a created date and a modified date. These are very useful for BI tools. The typical use case for people using Pro2 is they're gonna bring it into some sort of reporting platform. Crystal Reports, CyberQuery, Power BI, Tableau, these are common reporting tools that people use to report against the application data. Those reporting tools don't work directly on an open edge database, but they work very well on a SQL Server database. These BI tools also have the ability to load data into their proprietary database that they use for reporting. So instead of having to load the entire data set next time you want to refresh your BI database, you can load just what's changed since the last time you've refreshed that database by looking at the create date and modified date. By looking at the modified date, you can just get all the rows that have been modified since the last time you loaded the BI database. So let me talk about some of the use cases that we have. These are the common use cases that we have in the field using um, the Pro2 software. This is the most common case. This is a single source database or a set of source databases for an application 
and pushing the data to just a single target database. And then from there, they could go to a data lake, they could go to whatever they want. So they're doing reporting against the single target database. So in this case that we're showing here, that middle database is a staging database that then the data lake ends up pulling out of. Or alternatively, you could report directly against that middle database, which is very common as well. Another very common use case is a roll-up of multiple environments. I'm going to talk about manufacturing as an example. You may have a manufacturing business, and that manufacturing business may have multiple plants. Those multiple plants have their own database, and you want to do a roll-up to see what's happening with each of those plants. So instead of having to go to all three plants, you can look at the target database that has all of the data from all three plants rolled into a single platform. We identify where the row came from in the target database. So the schema would know which plant the row came from. So if you wanted to identify rows that came from a plant in Germany, for example, you could then just query against just that data in the consolidated database. Or if you want to know what's happening worldwide, you don't have to filter on Germany. You can say, I want to look at what's happening worldwide and look at all the rows across all the plants. We find this to be very useful especially in manufacturing, and this is a common use case because a lot of the consolidation that has happened in the manufacturing space has made it so there's many, many application instances globally for a single company, and the single company wants to be able to do consolidated reporting. And without Pro2, that has become very hard to do. And finally, another use case is taking OpenEdge and using Pro2 to segment the data. When you export the data to a SQL Server database, for the most part, they have free reign to look at all the rows in the table unless you're using some of the SQL Server features like multi-tenancy. So without multi-tenancy, one user could connect to the, the SQL Server database and view all the rows. And for some customers, that's not what they want. So in this example, they've had vendors that needed to get access to their select rows in the database and they want to have access to it, but as soon as you open the door for ODBC access, they have access to everything. You could tell them to filter by just their customer number, but they could write reports that don't. So in order to eliminate the ability of, of one vendor seeing another vendor's data, we separated the data out when it was replicated. Vendor one went to a specific SQL database. Vendor two went to another SQL database. And vendor three went to a third SQL database. Then vendor one had an ODBC connection to just their database. All the data in that database was just theirs. There was no way that they could go and look at another vendor's data. So those are three pretty useful uh, and very common use cases for the Pro2 product. Who are some of our partners that have embedded or used this Pro2 technology and made it part of their application? DMSI and Skyward and Broadridge have all included the schema for the nine tables, as well as the triggers to be deployed in their application. So when any of these customers want to turn on Pro2, they just buy the product. The, the change data capture then gets turned on. There's no real effort there. It's just changing a, a field in, in one of the replication tables. And then the rest of the work is just building out the SQL target schema and bulk loading the data to get the initial seed and then defining the replication processes and let them run. LexisNexis took this one step further. They embedded the Pro2 product into their application. So with a click of the button, they can turn on Pro2 without having to install anything. They like this technology so much that they made it part of their application. So the look and feel is, is their application, and it's just clicking a button, and all of a sudden, the bulk load happens and replication is turned on. So as I mentioned before, we have 250 customers. Here's a sampling of, of some of those customers that are using Pro2, some very familiar names. A lot of these customers have more than one instance because they are they're big sites that have many, many installs of OpenEdge in different plants or different locations. So to summarize here, Pro2 provides real-time replication reporting. I like saying it's your data, you get to report on it your way. It can plug into any existing reporting solution. Power BI is now free with any Microsoft Office 360 subscription. This tends to be the most common reporting solution that we see people asking for Pro2 for. 
It's low overhead. It's easy administration. It's just plumbing. Once it's set up and running, it takes very, very little administration. The threads are auto restarted in the event that one of them fails. So it does provide that real-time replication and it, it's self-healing. And it's a mature product. Like I said, we're on version six of this product. It's been around for over 10 years. So at this point, I'm going to pass it back to Michelle for questions. Thank you, Mike. Before we dive in for questions, just a quick reminder, we do have our global user conference coming up. Uh, Progress Next 2020 will take place June 14th to the 17th in Boston this year. So for more information on that, head over to progress.com slash next. Mike Fergal will be there and we'll be able to answer any questions you have around Pro 2 and many other things on site. And there'll be a lot of resources there for you to get some FaceTime with. So please be sure to check back on the Progress Next website. We are adding new content over the next month or so. So you'll start to see some of the newer sessions in all of that added soon. Okay, Mike, let's dive into questions. So I do have a few. The first question I have is, can I implement Pro 2 myself or do I need consulting help? Thanks. That's a good question. The overwhelming majority of customers that have purchased Pro 2 use consulting. We do have customers that can do it themselves. The value that consulting brings to the Pro 2 implementation is there's a lot of options, a lot of different configurations, a lot of ways to set this up. If you were just doing a canned single database to another single database replication, no customization, then sure. It, uh, especially with Pro 2, 6061, where the user interface and the installation became much more streamlined, it's fairly straightforward to go, to go do that. However, the product provides so much flexibility that it's typical that people want to do some sort of customization, whether it's combining three databases to a single database, because it, there may be three databases in the, in the source application, or doing a, even minor transformations. Most of this is driven by configuration files, include files, property files, but you need to know what properties to set to get the, the behavior you, you want. So with the majority of the customer base that have deployed Pro2 have, have used some level of consulting services. Next question. I'm already exporting data into a MS SQL database. Can I replace this export with Pro2? And just to follow on to that, can it use the existing SQL schema I created? So this is very typical. Most customers that we run into that have any interest in Pro2 have decided that they are making SQL Server their, their um, repository of, of choice. That tends to be the, the overwhelming majority of, of customers. And they've already done some exports to a CSV file and, and are loading those into a, into a SQL Server directly through some process. So the schema exists. The ideal case would be let Pro2 define the schema because it, it takes care of, like I said in, in the presentation, extent fields and, and uh, any other transformations uh, from scratch. But if you already have a SQL schema, you already have reports generated based on the, that SQL schema, we can plug into that SQL schema. It's more work because instead of clicking a button to generate the schema, we now have to do mapping manually. So hopefully uh, we're not um, taking 800 tables and, and having to hand wire those 800 tables to an existing schema. Hopefully it's, it's a handful of tables that you're exporting and maybe we're going to export the entire 800 table set, but this, these 20 have been pre-existing and we're hand wiring 20 of them. But certainly it is possible to do that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next question, does this use the new change data capture feature, and do I need to purchase that as part of Pro2? Yeah, so in 11.7 or higher, if you, that's your deployment platform that you are running your OpenEdge database on, then you can use the change data capture feature. The benefit of the change data capture is that it's, it's in the database, so it's no longer an external database. It doesn't use replication triggers, and it captures changes as changes made both from the application as well as any SQL updates. Those could be ODBC or JDBC updates. So there's a lot of benefits to using the change data capture feature. So if you're on 11.7 or higher, change data capture would be the preferred mechanism for um, capturing those changes. And it is part of Pro2. You don't have to purchase it separately. It is part of the Pro2 product suite. However, the license for change data capture is limited to only being used with Pro2. So you cannot buy Pro2, get the change data capture feature, and then use it for other, um, other 
aspects outside of the Pro 2 software. It's designed or included with the Pro 2 product specifically for use with Pro 2. Thanks, Mike. All right, some more questions we have. Is this the same for cloud and on-prem source databases? This is the same. If, if In the slide deck, I had two topographies. We had the topography for on-premise, which it was client server to, to the source database. And then we had a database that was in a remote data center that could be in the cloud. Um, that In that case, we had client to app server. We have customers that have their source database in the cloud, for example, Q80 Cloud, Skyward Cloud, and they are replicating on-prem to a local SQL Server database. We have customers that are on-prem, and they are locating to the SQL Azure instance in the cloud. So we have multiple deployments and multiple options with the cloud. The Open Edge database is in the cloud, and you're replicating on-prem. The Open Edge database is in the cloud, and you're replicating to another instance in, in the cloud, or your Open Edge database is on-prem, and you're replicating up to up to the cloud. It all works, and we have many customers in, in all three of those configurations. Um, next question. So regarding pure Open Edge database and users, how do we make the right value proposition for users that already bought OE Replication Plus? And then just um, a couple follow-on comments um, that were written in here for financial reports, read-only access, just to clarify. Yeah, so let's distinguish the two products. OE Replication is for disaster recovery. OE Repli Replication Plus is for disaster recovery plus reporting. Reporting is based on open edge data. So you're doing, you're reporting whether it's through the, the application written in the ABL or you're using the SQL interface through ODBC, ODBC or JDBC to that open edge database. So that is the OE Replication environment. It is not so. Reporting is not the primary use of of, of OE, OE replication. Disaster recovery is the primary use of OE, OE replication. Yeah. Pro two, its design is for reporting. Its design is not for disaster recovery. It is for reporting and consolidating data in out of open edge in, into a bigger ecosystem where there may be SAP and or other two other applications that you want to have consolidated reporting. You cannot do that with, with uh, OE replication. O, OE replication lets you report just against an open edge database. With Pro2, you can bring that open edge data into a larger uh, lake of, of data from other distinct applications. Thank you. Next question. We are on-prem but hope to be cloud within a couple of years. Is it easy to move from using Pro2 on-prem to cloud? The answer is yes. So on-prem, the, the hard part about Pro2 is going to be the configuration and the bulk loading of the data. Once the data is bulk loaded, provided your on-prem is just going, your move from on-prem to cloud is going to be a backup restore of the database, you don't need to re-bulk load the data. The, the, the seeding of that data, all the legacy data in the Open Edge database will already be there. And then it's just introducing the app server and um, and just pointing the environment to the app server, deploying the app server code. So it's not a it's not a complete re-implementation by any stretch. It's not free. It's not uh, trivial, but it is definitely a subset of what a full full install would be. We have to um, configure for the app server. We've got to deploy the app server code. Um, so there's those types of mechanisms to get to get to the cloud. But as long as the move to the cloud is a backup restore of the database, we will not need to bulk load, which is the majority of time in, in any um, Pro2 deployment. I, I think that's it, Mike. I don't see any other questions trickling in here. So obviously, you feel free to reach out to us or to your sales rep if you want to learn more or need any more specific information for your environment. And we thank you for joining sure. us today. And as Michelle said, I will be at Progress Next. So if you happen to be going to Next and you have questions there, come find me. Thank you very much.